What's going on, arcade nerds? Um, me and a friend of mine, um, were, recently we were starting messing around with the Asteroids hardware. And so, because of that, I want to get, get some more Asteroids boards working. So, I just pulled this off the shelf, and this is, uh, this is in the bad pile. So, at some point, I tested this and seen it was bad. <clears throat> So, um, I guess what I'm going to do is, we're going to do a video of fixing whatever is wrong with this Asteroids PCB. <clears throat> and so, in the process, maybe I could show some little minor tricks here and there. And we're going to go with the bare minimum test rig. Uh, you don't need a big complicated test rig to test vector games. Um, and I'm going to show you that in this video. Um, <clears throat> so, first things first. Uh, what I'm going to do is, right over here, you can see I have a switching power supply. And all I'm putting out is 5 volts. Let's go into these two uh, alligator connectors here. And I'm going to, I always jump it across this capacitor. There's my 5 volt, and here's my ground. Okay. Now, to test the logic side, all you need is 5 volt and ground for an asteroid PCB. That's it. There's no, no, there's no power on self-test or anything fancy like that. Of course, it will not output from the DAX. You will not see an output, but you will be able to test the logic side. So I'm going to set my meter here to voltage. And I'm going to find a spot right here. And I'm just going to turn on just, just to make sure we have 5 volts or so. Okay. We have 4.9. Close enough. Looks good to me. Okay, so we have 5 volts running through the board right now. Let me set this meter aside. Now, I'm going to grab my logic probe. It's a cheapo Allen Co. logic probe. And I'm going to find 5 volt and ground on the board somewhere to power this logic probe. I'm going to go with uh, this little decoupling cap here. Okay, and we have it. So I'm just going to test across the 8-bit the bus here just to see what's going on. I have this camera right in my face. Hold on, i got to move this somehow. That's a little better. Okay. Ooh, that's a good sign. Okay, let me explain why what we just seen is a good sign. Um, the program ROMs, which is these right here, which is what these pull-up resistors are connected to right here, are all doing something. Okay? and it's not constantly resetting. Okay? If the watchdog was, was to be triggered, it would constantly go reset, 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 reset. It would go beep, 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 beep. So, this is not hitting the watchdog. So that is great. So that means it's actually running these program ROMs here. And just for giggles, let's just check the vector. And it's doing stuff in the vectors. One cool thing about when you when you read the vector ROM on the Asteroids board is if you're familiar with the sound of the vector chatter on Asteroids, you can actually pick up the vector chatter. You can actually there's actually recognizable noises in there. Like it'll change when a different asteroid goes across the screen or something like that. Or when it goes into like the uh, insert coin screen or whatever the high score screen, you can actually hear the difference. Anyway, so that is awesome. So we actually have some, some life here. So, just for giggles, I'm going to test these uh, buffers. This buffer here and this buffer here talk to these DACs. They actually deliver data to both of these DACs. And if you have data going to this, that means you should be able to produce some sort of picture as long as the analog circuit is working properly. Who knows? So anyways, I'm going to read here. Oh yeah. We have data being fed to the DAX. 
So this is really good. So we actually might be producing a pitcher. So, well that was easy. Well, let's not get too excited. Let's see. Let me move this camera a little bit higher. Take me higher. All right. <clears throat> so the next thing I'm going to do is, remember I said minimal test rig, right? This is what I mean by minimal test rig. We have five volts. We need plus and minus 15 volt and five volt and 8.3 volts up here to make it work. And five volt doesn't deliver all that, right? Well, you get yourself a cheap DC to DC converter like this. You get five volts in and you get plus and minus 15 volts out. They also sell a 12 volt variant. You can also use 12 volts to run this. It's no big deal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the power. Okay, my power switched off. And let's move this over to the vector side. All right. So what I'm going to do is, you can buy these on eBay, by the way. They're really cheap. They're just simple plus, plus and minus DC to DC converters. Okay. So voltage in. It's labeled right in the back of the PCB, right? Let's find a 5-volt tab. It's like right around here. There it is. 5 volt, and there's a ground. Let's connect to our ground. And negative voltage is going to go on this capacitor, and positive voltage is going to go on this capacitor. Boom. Now, that's literally all we need, rather than an entire Atari power brick and so on, to test it. But, there's one thing that this is not going to properly test. What we're doing is, we're feeding plus and minus 15 volts directly into the circuit. But, there's 15 plus and minus 15 volt regulators. So, um, this does not test the regulator section. But, if once you get the game working, and <laughs> you could easily, easily get to that uh, in the end, later on. Okay, so see here. I got another alligator clip. Let's find a better... Where's a good ground? It's not already here. Uh, ground up here somewhere. Is that a ground? Can't see. Ah! Okay, so here's a ground. Right here. Let's connect that to one of my scope grounds. Okay. And we're going to pick an output. We're going to call this X out. I don't know which is which. I don't care. We're going to call this Y out. Now I'm going to turn on my scope. already in vector. Let's center that dot a bit. Okay, I'm going to turn the power on. Okay. Something is clearly wrong, right? But that's, it's actually looking pretty damn good so far, isn't it? Okay, let me adjust this a little bit. It looks like the game is playing, but we're missing an axi. Axis, axi, I don't think. Am I, am I, I'm mispronouncing that, I know. Okay, so, is it this one? Disconnect it. Nope, it looks like X out is working to some degree. And over here, Y out, nothing changes when I disconnect that. Okay, just for giggles, someone socketed these muxes. I'm gonna wiggle these sockets and see if anyone did anything funny with that. No, nothing comes back when I do that. Okay.
So we do have both positive and negative voltages. And the reason we know that is because the, the scope is actually going right and left. And just, be, just for giggles, I'm going to turn power off. And the line is dead center. The spot is in dead center. So I'm going to turn the power back on. You can see it's actually drawing the picture. Just one axis. Axis. <clears throat> so, just, just for giggles, let's get the probe again. And let's make sure we're feeding data to both DACs. So let me... I'm going to disconnect my little scope ground for now. And you know what? I might be able to use this. Yeah, I can use this decoupler. There's a the ground. Let's find a nice place for a boulder to just not shorten stuff out. Okay. So it was Y. That's this guy. Okay, we do have data. Just for giggles, let's check X. Okay, so we do have data that's going through the DAX. Yes, we do. So, just for giggles, I'm going to, to test the... Oh, you don't see me in the camera. Okay, let me show you what I did. I, I connected my probe. And remember that these uh, these chips here are connected directly to the DAC. And this, this goes to this DAC. And this goes to this DAC. But either way, I'm just making sure there's data being fed to the DACs. And there is. There is data coming from the board, going to the DAX. So, I'm going to look up on the schematic, and just for giggles, we're going to trace the signal from the DAC all the way back. And we know we don't have an output on our Y. So, you know, just for giggles, before I do that, let's do this. Okay, power is now off. I'm going to get this meter. And I'm going to connect it. I'm going to set it for resistance. And I'm going to check this pot. See if I can get that in the camera. You probably can't see it, can you? Okay, we're going to connect this line to here and this line to here. I believe these are 10K. I can't remember exactly. Okay, that's reading, that's reading point... That's basically zero, so I guess that's how the circuit is. So we're really wanting to read from this line to this line. And that is 6K. If I turn that knob a bit, what am I going to get? 4K. Okay, so we know that the Y pot is good. Often these pots will break. You know, being stacked up on some shelf somewhere, the pots will bend back and forth, or from people monkeying with it over the years, the, you know, the metal bends back and forth so much that it eventually breaks. Okay, so we know the pot is good. So what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to look up the data sheet, and I'm going to, going to track the output of these two DACs, or this DAC, I should say, and go down. I could blindly just replace the op amp, the op amp, and the mux. And odds are, that'll probably fix it. Probably. But, just for giggles, let's look at the schematics and let's trace where the output of the DAC goes to the input of the, of the op amp and goes to the output of, you know, whatever. Okay, so I took a look at the schematic. And on the schematic, let's see if I can get this in camera. You can see that the output of the DAC goes to pin 6 on the op amp. Okay? So the output from here goes to pin 6 on the op amp. And the output of the op amp is pin 7. Okay? So just for giggles, I'm going to use my probe here. 
I'm going to touch pin 6 to see if we have an output. Whoops, get that down there. Pin 6 to see if we have an output. And then I'm going to touch pin 7 to see if the op amp is actually amplifying whatever we have. But this will also test if our DAC is putting out something. It may not be putting out something right, but it will put out something, right? So, <clears throat> let's disconnect that. And that's, that's my finger. I'm touching the probe. Okay. So let's go to pin 6. This is from the op amp. I see nothing, but hold on. Let's change the scale. Yeah, okay. So we do have something coming from the DAC. And let's go to the output. Yep, and it is being amplified. Okay, hopefully you can see that in the picture. That is, this is from the DAC, and this is after it's amplified. Okay, so we do know that the DAC is working, and the op amp is amplifying whatever is coming out of the DAC. So, I can guess and say that this op amp is probably good, and I can guess and say this DAC is good, even though we still don't know. We don't know. <clears throat> but I do know, right out of why, oh, look at that. We have a weak, weak, weak signal now. That's from why. But that is cranked way up. I mean, this should be anywhere from, like, you know, let's say 5 to 12 volts. And, okay, okay let's switch back to vector. Okay, we are getting some sort of output now. We didn't have an output before. Okay, we now have X and Y connected. But this is really, really... Um, the the uh, scope is set to a really low voltage. So we have really weak voltage coming from there. It looks like it's sort of displaying something. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we're getting less than one volt out of Y. And that is not good. So, <clears throat> just for giggles, because I've seen this before, uh, I am not going to replace this yet. I'm not going to replace the DAC, because I'm pretty sure that's probably doing something right. I am going to replace this 3906 and this 3906. Um, these two are in the inversion circuit. Um, not all asteroids boards have those transistors, but tri three, twin 3906s are very cheap. They're dirt cheap. And sometimes I've seen these go bad right in the inversion circuit, and it kind of kills the output. So just for giggles, I'm going to, yeah, uh, this, this op amp right here is used uh, to invert the signal, and it's turned on with this or that. So just for giggles, they're dirt cheap. Let's replace the twin 3906 on two two in 3906s just on a hunch. Okay. I replaced these two transistors on my hunch and it did absolutely nothing. We still have that same picture on the scope, one axis. And both are obviously connected. So, let's go back to the schematics. Let's get serious. Okay, let me hold this camera still. Anyways, so far we've tested if there is an output from the DAC, and there is. And we've tested if there is an input and an output from this first, TL this first op amp built inside this TLO82 chip. Um, so, let's, let's just follow the signal down, and let's see if we have an output from here. Uh, and let's see how another output from there and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and just for giggles, technically if I just probe this pin, I should see a picture on the screen, on the scope. And if so, we know this op amp's good. And if I probe right here, we should also see a picture on the scope and so on. 
So what, we're just going to keep on going until we find a problem. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Let's start back with this op amp. Um, this pin... Yeah, you can't see. Anyways, the one pin is the input, and the other pin is the output. And so I'm going to show that on the scope, and let's see if anything changes. So I'm going to take this off of the Y out lug, and I'm going to touch uh, four, five, six. Pin six is from the DAC, of course, there's not enough current. But this, there we go. We have a picture. So that shows that that first uh, part of the op amp is good. So now let's go to. So anyway, so what we did is we tested right here. We have an output. But for some reason, by the time it gets down to Y out, there is no output. So, output, yes. So let's check this output of this TLO81. TLO81 is right here. This chip is only there for the uh, cocktail or the or the cocktail boards and some uprights. Anyway, so that is what pin six. So let's check pin six. Let's see if that op amp is working. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, so that is working. Okay, for now let's assume the MUX is good. And let's go back to this final op amp, which brings us right back to that same first chip right here. So on that, the input is to output is pin 1. Okay, and that just goes right there, and that's that's it. There's nothing left after that. Okay. So, what pin was it again? Pin one. Pin one. Oh, what happened? It pulls it right off the screen. Get out. That's what I'm going to do. Just for giggles. <coughs> Just for giggles, I'm going to touch the bottom of the board. <coughs> and see what we get on the screen. Just with my bare hand. Let's connect this to the regular Y out again. When you touch the bottom of an op amp, often it'll change its gain. I'm just curious if anything will change. Nothing is changing. And I'll go back to this guy. Yeah. A uh, slight. Oh, there we go. If I, if I lick my finger <laughs> and touch that, there we go. It's coming back out some. Which This changes the gain of the off amp a bit. So, I guess let's replace this bastard. Okay. I pulled out that TLO82, put it in a socket, and I replaced the TLO82 with an NE5532. Why did I replace it with the wrong part? Well, the reason why is because the NE5532 uh, is actually has actually has a cleaner output. It's a cleaner op amp than the original TLO82. But keep in mind, you cannot always replace a uh, TLO82 with an NE5532. Why? Because it, it it really depends on it really depends on the chip on the circuit around the chip. Okay, um, for example, the NE5532 has a lower input impedance, and the input impedance uh, might affect the circuit around it. But in this situation, and in probably probably many other Atari games, if not all Atari vectors, you can replace an any a TLO82 with an NE5532. But check it out, man. It is working. Now keep in mind, the picture we have on our XY scope here does not uh, account for Z output. So, you know, uh, oh, you know what, just for fun, let's do a little thing for you, a little experiment. I'm going to read Z out. Now, you see that? 
see how I have different dots? Right now, we're in a section of the game. See, this dot would account for the Z, Z uh, having zero output, being blanked. Now you see this dot, 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 dot. This is the different screens. For example, asteroids might be one intensity. Um, your ship might be another intensity. And the high score table might have several different intensities and so on. Uh, see there? Look at that, all these things. This is just whatever's going on in the track mode. I always thought that was kind of interesting. Maybe you might. Anyways, yeah. Well, shit, that was a little, a little too easy, wasn't it? Let, let's, let's connect it to... I'm either going to connect it to an Asteroids machine or connect it to the Vectrex. I suppose it would be easier just to connect it to an Asteroids machine. And that way we can actually see a clear picture of what's going on in case there's any other problems that we might have missed while looking at the crappy picture on this scope. So let's do that before we declare victory and let's make sure we have all the sounds and so on too. You know, there's something I wanted to mention on video and I forgot. Now this is just a theory of mine. It's not set in stone. I could be totally wrong. It's just a guess, okay? But since this any 5532 takes less um, work you know it's it, it's impedance but let's just, let's just say resistance let's say it's really high resistance so it takes less current to operate than the TLO 82 okay so that means it puts this DAC under less of a load so this DAC does not have to work as hard to make this op amp operate so it's possible this is this is where my this is my theory it could lengthen the life of this hard to find DAC by running any 5532 now I like I said I can't prove that that's just 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 my theory but anyways yeah it's, you know, so back to the video all right we are in my messy garage and Kelly is putting in that board we just worked on and <clears throat> here's an asteroids machine let's get another asteroids machine <laughs> uh, and yeah it's it's a mess man it's just it's just a big ass mess here is that uh, video pinball that I never made the final video for but I will I will once we have more space in here Oh man, it's unbelievable. The space in my garage fluctuates like you wouldn't believe. Like one month I could have this thing nearly cleared out except for the a few games on the edge. And the next month, this. It goes back and forth. And, and I would just love to have a, a steady, <laughs> clean garage. Oh man, it's a mess. Anyways. And it's not all my fault. It's not all my fault. No, seriously, I have teenage boys, and I have them do things, and I'll say, hey, throw that in the garage, throw that in the garage. And... Emphasis on the throw? Emphasis on the throw. <laughs> what? Are we plugged in yet, or what? Yeah, it should be. Right? Okay, yeah. Okay, will the LEDs work? Oh, stay there, back there. I need you to adjust the size whenever it happens. Okay. Uh, grab a pot and start turning. Okay, uh, yeah, good enough. Now do the next part, pot. Okay, stop. Look at this. Pulsar starts. I think it's in a different language. Ah, dip switches. Um, flip some dip switches. Um, Just, the you can do it live. Yeah, I, I don't care. Oh, yeah, okay. You can look at the other board. Wonder which language that is. Pulsar. Nothing changed.
anything? No. no, nothing changed. I flipped a whole bunch of pictures. Hit the reset button. Just for giggles. I don't I think it's real time now. Whoa. Now it says Flicka two Joygos. Oh. We're really screwed up. And we're and we're no longer in free play. Well, okay, now it says one coin, two plays. Here, I'm just going to coin up. So I have the right oh, and it says push start now. Okay. There we go. <laughs> All right, Kelly, can you hold the camera? Because I only have one hand otherwise. Just want to check the sounds and whatnot. Oh, oh we're missing fire. Okay, the, the click. We are missing fire. Okay, turn off. We know something is wrong. Okay. I thought that was gonna be it. Okay, so let's um, <clears throat> see what's up with with fire. Okay, I kind of I kind of left you guys hanging. I did a few things off camera. Uh, but uh, so, I, so in other words, I, I'm going to I'm going to explain what I did off camera. But just to prove that now the sounds are finally working, check it out. Now you hear the thrust. I also was missing thrust and didn't realize it. Thrust was missing. We now have. Here's the fire sound. Remember that was just a pop. Saucer sound, explosion. Okay, so let me go downstairs. I'm gonna bring a board with me and I wanna show you what I did to fix these sounds. Alright. Okay, let me explain what I did. I kinda left you guys high and dry and didn't uh, follow along. <clears throat> Anyways, I first noticed that when I hit the fire sound, all I got was a pop. And I've had that happen to me in the past before. It's actually a common common error. So I just went ahead and, and did it, thinking it would be real quick, off-camera thing, and then I'd explain it. Well, then other things I found were wrong, and so it took me, you know, a few back and forths between my basement and the garage to get, the, get, to get things figured out. Okay, so what I did was I replaced the uh, capacitor uh, C... See if I can do it in the camera. Ah, you might be able to see it in the picture. C47 and C48. Those capacitors deal with the discharge of the. Uh, how do I? Do? It make it, it. It it has to do with the fire sound. How about that. Anyways, <clears throat> so I tested it and absolutely nothing was different. So I went back and said, what the, what the hell? I'll, I'll replace the 555. So I replaced the 555. Nothing happened. Nothing changed. So the analog switch, the 4016, I moved it to a different location of the board so I could see, see you know, I swapped, I swapped uh, that chip with another 4016 somewhere else in the board, and still nothing happened. So I thought, what the heck, you know? And, and oh, and somewhere, somewhere around that time period, I realized when I went during testing, oh shit, it doesn't have thrust sound either. So I, I quit on that for a second, and I went down and see if I can do this on the thing. And I seen that the thrust sound is amplified by this uh, LM324 at P11. So just for the hell of it, I put a new LM324 in there. Boom! Thrust came back. And so I said, "Oh, awesome!" And uh, I said, "What the hell? They're known to go bad all the time for some reason." Let's just replace the LM324 that controls ship firing. Boom! Ship firing came back too. So it was both, there's two bad LM324 chips uh, op amps on the board. And so that brought back both um, sounds. Anyways, I guess that's about it. Um, have a good one, guys. Uh, please subscribe if you can. Uh, and, uh, you know, have a good day.